A reading from the first book of Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you are called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when that time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. When I was uh, a little baby, not quite as, um, a little younger than Micah is, um, I had colic. I was a colicky baby, and I have heard stories, multiple stories, about what that was like. So I cried all the time. I cried all the time, and they think that's probably because I had a stomach ache, and I just cried and cried. And my mom tells stories of just rocking me and rocking me for hours and for hours. And my dad tells a story of um, even putting me like in a carrier and putting me on the dryer and turning the dryer on. And I've asked him, you know, did, did that help? Did I stop crying? And, or did you just not, you just couldn't hear me anymore? <laughs> and he said it was kind of a combination of the two. So they, they were, it was a tough time for them. Um, and maybe you've had been through that with a baby that just won't stop crying or or um, maybe a loved one, a grandchild, and it's a hard, it's a hard thing that they were in the midst of. And um, when I got a little older, my my sister helped as well. My sister was three and a half years older than me, and she would put me, yeah, she would put me, a baby, in this baby carriage that was my mom's that she played with when she was little, and then we got to play with it. But my but my mom would put me in that baby carriage, and we had a long hallway in our house. And my sister would run me down the hallway in the baby carriage. And I would stop crying. And I'm not sure if that was because I was in shock or or I thought it was fun, you know, like entertain. And then she would run me down the hallway again. And uh, and then, again, I would stop crying for a little while. And um, I share that story with you. because sometimes we do, we just, we just kind of go faster and faster in our lives, too. And um, 
maybe we're shocked, <laughs> you know, we're just in the, like in the survival mode, or, or maybe we're kind of entertaining, and there's, a, there's a, just a lot going on. But it, it may be that we've stopped crying, but what the reality of what's going on is still there. Like my stomach, maybe we're still having a tough time, even then. And we're in this season where there's so many things that can encourage us to go faster and faster. Um, I don't know if we can click to the next slide in the PowerPoint. Or maybe to switch to the PowerPoint. Maybe, Wayne, we might need... Okay. Um, that there's so many things in life and in this time of Advent that call us to go, to go faster. And um, that in the midst of that, not necessarily to, to just go faster and faster, um, but to maybe take some time to slow down and attend to what is really going on. Um, and maybe the real joyful things that are going on, or maybe the real hard things that are going on. And so this time of Advent is also, like we talked about with the kids, is, is, is a new year in the church. And to take some time, kind of like maybe some of you do at, at the New Year's, New Year's time, to kind of reflect on the year that came before um, and to slow down and to think and, and give thanks for the joyful things that are going on and maybe attend to some of the things that are hard. This is a time of Advent. It's a, it's a, it's a new year in the church, um, a time maybe to, to, to slow down and think that we give thanksgiving and celebrate things that have gone on in this last year, look back and see the changes or transitions that you and your family have been through, or us as a church, and uh, maybe grieve those things, those losses that we've experienced. I know when I look back at this year, um, this is a year where Micah had his first step, and even now, this last weekend, he's just getting better at uneven ground and grass and gravel and flooring, and, and that's been so fun. Um, and so we celebrate that, and as a church, there's much to celebrate. As we've had our new confirmation class, affirm their faith, and our high school and young adults did a mission trip to Washington D.C. and to Malawi. Um, we've got a new partnership with Mission of Hope, where we're serving a meal monthly. There's deeper connections with the Christian outreach of Marion Cares. We're launching Stephen Ministry here. We're welcomed intern Alyssa. But there's also been hard things. As I look back in our own family this last year, uh, my brother-in-law's cancer has come back this year. My grandmother um, has spent most of this year in the nursing home after having been living at home. There's been hard funerals here as we've lost uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. There's been a lot of transition. As I look at this year, um, a lot of staff transition in the last year and, and few years that you've been through as a congregation. And I think about that, I think about the different ministry leaders here at the church who um, are either stepping into a new role here in the church or who um, are no longer serving in leadership here at LCR. And that's a lot of change. That's a lot of transition in, in, a, in a few years. And we and it's okay to, to grieve that, to notice, to take time to slow down and notice that change. Um, transition can be hard. It can be hard. And also, as we slow down, um, as we hear this call in our gospel to kind of be awake, to be alert, um, also to, to be alert to the new things that God is doing and the new things that God is um, is bringing. And we can do that as we look to some of the new faces that we have um, in leadership here at the church and the new gifts and passion and energy that they bring to our times of worship and learning and, and outreach. And thankful for these uh, people and, and the gifts that they bring. But it's okay to look and, and, and miss and recognize the loss of those people that have served in leadership before. Um, uh, for some, um, just missing the way Kevin preached. Maybe some of you were nurtured in faith by Pastor Blair. Do you miss Tammy's children's messages? 
or Miss Wynn's way of directing, or Matt's voice of leading us in song. It's okay to grieve. It's okay to recognize that these transitions may be hard. And in the midst of that grief, we can begin to watch for the new thing that God is doing in the church, in us and through us, to see God's faithfulness in many seasons. God is faithful again and again. And so at this time of Advent, um, we both we give thanksgiving and celebrate, and we, and we take some time to slow down and be watchful for what God is doing and to notice those things, knowing that God is faithful to us in the midst of it. This is the season of Advent. Um, it's a new year. Um, and also that Advent means, means coming. So we kind of look back at when Jesus came, and we also look forward to the end. So it's kind of a beginning at the end in this time of Advent. Um, as a church, we confess in our creeds and in our life together that Christ came, the first Advent. Um, Christ has died. Christ is risen and is active now, coming to us, like in, in the bread and the wine, in the word of, of a brother or sister in Christ, offering forgiveness, offering strength to this journey. But Christ will come again in this unique future way where um, Christ will make all things right. Because we look around, there are still some things that are not yet right. When Christ came in the first uh, advent, um, God's kingdom is broken in, and God is, is at work, and we see that in our life together. But we also see that there is still brokenness, and there is still evil in this world. And so we look with hope for the time when Christ will come again to set all things right and to end all suffering. And so on this Advent, first Sunday in Advent, we oftentimes look to that final hope, to that Christ will come again part. So we're looking at that here today on this first Sunday in Advent. But in between these two, um, we see that there are, um, there are still hard things that we experience. Um, between the first Advent and this Advent that we're waiting for Christ to come again. As we look around, um, we can see that as there's a shooting massacre at a small town church. And we know that all is not yet right. We have loved ones die of cancer too young. And we know that all is not yet made right. We experience brokenness in our relationships with one another, We say things that are hurtful. We struggle to forgive. And we know that all is not yet made right. There are hard things that we're facing in life in this time in between. This time in between. And as you think about about that, what hard thing are you facing right now? At home, at work, at school. This in-between time, there are hard things around us and that we experience. In our reading from 1 Corinthians, we hear that we can have hope in this time of waiting. And it's the, the 1 Corinthians reading is on your insert, um, if you want to kind of look at that as we go, or if you've got your Bible with you, kind of look at some of the ways in which God brings hope in the midst of um, this time of waiting. We have hope in this midst of waiting because of God's grace. Because of God's grace. And grace is the totally free gift of forgiveness and salvation and love and life from God. And we hear that we've been enriched um, in Christ during this time. And that we've been given spiritual gifts from God to to uplift one another and encourage one another during this in-between time. And that God will strengthen you to the end. And we hear this promise that God is faithful and that God has called you into relationship and fellowship with Jesus Christ and with other brothers and sisters in Christ who gather in his name. So we see that in our reading from 1 Corinthians. 
I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. And then it goes on, um, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you are called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And so we have hope in the, in the midst of this time because of God's grace. God is giving you gifts for living right now. God is giving you strength to make it through now. God is faithful. God is giving you forgiveness and strength for the journey of faithful living through the bread and wine of Holy Communion, giving you strength through the community of faith and the words um, of your brothers and sisters in Christ, reminding you of God's presence with you, of God's grace, of God's forgiveness, and God's strength. We have been given all of these things so we don't rely on our own strength to face the hard things in our lives, but because of God's outpouring of what God is doing and has done in your life and this promise that God will strengthen you to the end. So when you think about that hard thing or hard things, maybe overwhelming things that, are, that you're facing right now, we can have hope. We hear about that in 1 Corinthians. And maybe some of you are ready to think of what God might be calling you to as a next step as you face that hard thing together with God. Maybe in the midst of grief or depression, your hard thing is getting out of bed and starting a new day. Maybe your hard thing is going to a class at school that you are struggling with or with a teacher that you're struggling with or with a classmate that's making life hard. Maybe one moment you think that things are coming together <clears throat> and it's going to be okay. And the next moment or the next day, just things just seem to be unraveling. And just you're in a survival mode and just to take that next step and what might that be. Or in your family, reaching out in love or reaching out to forgive. Or maybe simply to take one day at a time to survive and keep the family going. Maybe your hard things at school or with a favorite activity or with your friends. Maybe you feel called to support a friend or help them or forgive them. Or maybe you're looking at the hard things around you, the evil in the world around you, and you feel called to take a step for justice, to speak up for someone to help someone in need, or to maybe to prioritize your own finances differently in order to make a difference in the life of someone else, or to risk reputation and befriend an outsider. You have been given gifts from God for right now. You have been given strength from God to make it through right now. You think of that hard thing you're facing you can do that hard thing because God is faithful and God is with you and God will strengthen you to the end. We're going to watch a, a video, which is kind of a reflection song for us as we think about this. And the refrain is, you can do this hard thing. You can do this hard thing because God is with you and the Lord Jesus Christ is your strength. Cold wind. 
interstation, breathing into our gloves. It would change me forever, leaving for God knows what. You carried my bags. You said I'll wait for you. You can do this hard thing. You can do this hard thing. It's not easy, I know, but I believe that it's so. You can do this hard thing. Late at night, I called, and you answered the phone. The worst it had. Happened, and I did not want to be alone. You quietly listened. You said we'll see this through. You can do this hard thing. You can do this hard thing. It's not easy, I know, but I believe that it's so. You can do this hard thing. Here we stand, breathless and pressed in hard times. Hearts hung like a laundry on backyard clotheslines. Impossible just takes a little more time. From the muddy ground comes a green volunteer. In a place we thought barren, new life appears. Morning will come whistling some comforting tune for you. You can do this hard thing. You can do this hard thing. It's not easy, I know, but I believe that it's so. You can do this hard. Advent, we have hope because of Jesus Christ who came down, is with us, and is coming. You can do whatever hard thing is before you because the Lord Jesus Christ is with you and is your strength. God will strengthen you to the end. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we share in our confession of faith.